Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast. I have Coach Mount Joy here today. He's going to be talking about training a passer. And I'm just so excited to have Coach Mount Joy back. I got an email from Norm Chow. Norm Chow will be coming on the show. And I just called Dan Henning. So um, we're getting the goats. We're, we're not messing around with nobody. I'm the low man on the totem pole, but we're getting the best that ever do it. And Coach Mountjoy is one of them. So, Coach Mountjoy, how are you doing today, and, and what are you planning on talking about, Coach? Great. I thought we would talk about training a passer. We've already talked about the uh, quick passing game, and we talked about the five-step uh, uh, drop-back passing game. And – probably more important than than the plays uh, in the passing game that we've already gone over in the last two uh, podcasts would be the technique because if you don't have a a really uh, good passer, you probably not going to throw the ball very well. So uh, we'll start. If you want me to go ahead and start. Yeah, coach, let me, let me ask you one. Let me ask you one question before we get going. I put, I put it up on the screen. Let me know when you see it. Um, yeah, I see it now. It's just training a pass. Coach, how do you feel that I started this podcast and we're getting all of these great legends on and you get to talk and coach? How, how, how do you feel? Oh, I love it. You know, because I've always said that uh, that I can't live without football and that football is my narcotic. And I'm sure the same is true of Jim McDowell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Now, Dan Henning also, except Dan uh, is probably out on the golf course today and he's not even thinking about football, but he was one of the great ones too. So, Coach, who else do I need to try to get? Bill Callahan, who else do you want to hear? If I can get you. You were talking about offensive line coaches, such as Jim McNally. And I was saying that the ones that I need, I grew up with, uh, in addition to Jim McNally, that Joe Bugle, Alex Gibbs, Jim Hannaford, and Howard Mudd all deceased, and uh, makes me feel lonely. <laughs> so, yeah. um, maybe Bill Callahan, and, and uh, I'm not sure who else. Uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, it was a great line coach at Florida State a few years ago. What was his name? Now? Rick Trickett. Yeah, right. You might want to talk with him. I coached his son in a quarterback camp one summer, actually. Okay, coach. Yeah, he's, I got, he's in coaching too. I got a it's young fun. I got a young guy on here, Dorrington Myers. He coaches the Black Widows female football team in Richmond. And he is watching. He's already sent a message. I told him that you were coming on. And he he's a quarterback coach, but he wants he says he wants to know how to network. He wants to know how to get better. So I gave him your email. It's there on the screen, Dorrington. Sure. Bill Mountjoy okay. at yahoo.com. And he'll yeah, be asking some questions, page. Coach, as as we uh, go through. You can see a picture of Dorrington there. But uh, um, so what what can you tell Dorrington today about your topic, Coach? Well, uh, as we said, it's it's not the plays. If, if you're going to throw the football and coach a quarterback, that it's not going to be the plays. It's going to be how well he's been taught to – uh, play quarterback, and it takes three things. One of them, you've got to have functional intelligence, number one. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you – I've had quarterbacks before that were special ed kids, but they, they understood football. So they had a functional IQ. The second thing, and probably most important, is accuracy because who wants a quarterback that can't hit the target with the ball in, in, in the correct time? And the third thing would be toughness because you don't want a quarterback that's going to get sacked one time and he's out for the season. Now, that'll happen, but I'm talking about you want a kid that is a fairly tough kid that knows he's going to get hit from time to time. But that's why we don't run our quarterback either on options and zone reads and things like that because we want to spend all the time getting him better on passing the ball. And and, uh, he's going to take a sack from that from time to time, but we don't want him – we don't want to hang him out to dry either. So I would say that. And uh, if you want me to go ahead and start on the topic, uh, he's free to chime in anytime he wants. Yeah, he, he'll ask questions, Coach. Um, you know, this is the quarterback guru, Dorrington. There's nobody in America that knows more about quarterback play and Coach Mountjoy, who learned from Sid Gilman, all right, the, the father of the modern 
passing game. All right, there's Coach Mountjoy's uh, email right there, Coach. What do you want me to do? You want me to scroll down? Uh, take it up just so that you can see uh, a little bit more of Joe Namath down there in that picture. Yes, sir. Just a little bit, not much. You can leave my email address. Up. Let's take it up so you get more of the picture. All right, there it is, Coach. Oh, I see you behind me. No, 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 go back, back. There, right there. Anyway, yeah, I don't know uh, no more about quarterback play than anybody in America. Norm Charles in Switzerland right now. <laughs> I, got, I got a whole lot from Norm. I would say that Norm is a guy you really would want to talk to. <laughs> yeah, but, know. Coach, he's in Richmond and you're in Richmond. So, that's – I mean, that's the next yeah, best thing. Yeah, but he could yeah, – right. But uh, we're hoping Norm is going to come on your site. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Dorrington is welcome to email me or phone call me or even come by if he needs to look. At, I've got quarterback training videos here, great ones. And, uh, of course, the picture's worth a thousand words. So, Dorrington, you're getting blessed. Dorrington, you were smart enough to get on the clinic on LinkedIn and ask a question. And now, look, the Lord is working in your life, man. He has brought you together with Coach Mountjoy. All right, Coach, you're good. Okay, now. On coaching quarterbacks, the first thing is you, you don't want to overcoach a kid. Uh, sometimes you can take a kid who has the ability to throw a ball uh, and you can coach him to a point where you've messed him up. So we don't overcoach quarterbacks, but uh, we do coach him up. Of course, I'm going to talk about that today, but we don't want to overcoach a kid. Probably the number one thing that you want to tell a quarterback is to always keep his elbow up. To teach him to throw the ball up high. As you can see, Joe Namath in this picture, he's got that ball coming out more than a foot over his head. And uh, that's what all good quarterbacks should do. If you're throwing the ball down uh, below that, down by your ear or something, that's wrong, uh, no matter what technique you use. Now, it's important that you use the, that you use the, uh, the proper technique because an improper technique can lead to inaccuracy. You won't be accurate. It can also lead to a sore arm. I remember a great quarterback coach telling me one time that in, in the offseason he had his quarterback throw uh, a thousand passes a week, five days a week, 200 passes a day in the offseason to develop his technique. And I said, well, did he get a sore arm? He said, if you use a proper technique, you won't get a sore arm. So we, I found that to be true. I don't remember having a quarterback with a sore arm, but we, we stress proper technique. And you also want to stress accuracy over arm strength. I'd rather have a quarterback who can't throw the ball, but say 30 yards, but he's accurate, rather than one that maybe can throw it 50, 60 yards who's not accurate. A big key to all this is before we go, before we move to the next page. But a big key to this is to use a proper size ball. If you use a ball that's too big for a kid's hands, he's going to end up throwing the ball overhand. I'm, I'm sorry, a, a sidearm. Excuse me. Using a ball that's too big for a boy's hands will make you throw sidearm. So we have some guidelines here. And, of course, I've developed quarterbacks. Uh, my son and my grandson, when they were six to nine years old or six to eight years old, I started them off. But you, you have to have, if you're six to eight years old, you use a peewee size football. And I write these down because you can find, you can get these from sporting good deals. So six to eight year old kids use a peewee size football. <laughs> nine to twelve, I'm sorry, nine to eleven uses a junior size football. Twelve to fourteen, we say they use a youth football. Although I've said had some fourteen year old kids that, that could use full size, but generally, twelve to fourteen is a, has a youth size football, and fifteen and over use the official size football so there's actually four sizes of football footballs and depending on what age group you're coaching you want to make sure that they use the proper size football you don't want to start a kid with throwing a ball that's too big for but bigger than that for the, that those age groups because you end up throwing the ball sidearm somebody said well all the great passes back a uh, hundred years ago through sidearm which is true and they did because the football then was a lot bigger than it is now. Even in college and pro ball, those guys had to grip it side, to throw it side on to get it out because they couldn't uh, grip it properly to hold it to bring it up over their head to throw the ball. So the next thing I might say, we're not going to talk about pass drops because some coaches will have a quarterback on the side and he'll take a three-step drop. Other coaches would have the quarterback take the snap and just throw it. Some coaches 
coaches will have the quarterback under so they'll take a five step drop. And other coaches will be in a gun and he'll just take instead of five steps, he'll take three and throw it. So we're not gonna talk at all about the quarterback's drops. We will talk about his techniques and um we'll get to that in just a second. I'll learn this stuff from really uh, in quarterback camps. I work quarterback camps of Chuck Purvis. Uh, he's dead now. But Chuck Purvis uh, used to coach at Illinois and at Baylor. Bill Crunchfield, he coached, uh, he's passed away. He's coached at Florida State, Atlanta Falcons. Dan Henning, he's yeah. still living. I worked six uh, six quarterback schools with Dan Henning, and um, Dan coached at Florida State, Washington Redskins, Miami Dolphins, and of course the great Bill Walsh, who is also deceased. Dan's the only one of those four coaches that's still living. And I knew Chuck Burris, Bill Crutchfield, and Dan Henning real well personally. I didn't know Bill Walsh personally, but we talked on the phone and emailed each other. So anyway, uh, let's go to the next page. We'll start right on the quarterback's throwing technique. Yes, sir. And uh, Dorrington Myers might want to uh, get a copy of this. Uh, we, I can email him a copy of this along with some other things. So I take it right up to where it's let's hit right there. Go a little higher where it says technique. Take technique to the top of the page. A little bit higher. All right, the quarterback throwing technique there. Quarterback throwing technique. <clears throat> He's already taken his steps back. Now the back the back swing and step means you take the ball back to throw it and taking your first step. And that's simple and direct. There's no twist. You don't take a big wind up. The ball and you've got the ball under your chin, uh, uh, let's say uh, right around your numbers, above the numbers, between the numbers and the chin. The ball goes straight back and up to a point above and beyond the shoulder. Now, this is something that people don't, I think that people don't really understand. Some people don't. You don't twist the wrist out as you bring the ball back. As you're bringing the ball back to throw, and some people won't agree with this, but I, I've coached this way forever. It works for me. So as you take the ball up the throw, the palm faces the target throughout the entire bringing the ball back, up and back. And you say, well, the palm faces the target. Does he turn his palm out? No. If the palm faces the target, it's like, I always tell the quarterbacks, it's like throwing a volleyball. If you're going to throw a volleyball and you pick the volleyball up your right hand, your palm has to face where you're going with the volleyball the entire time you throw it because if you twist your wrist at all, it will curve. So we stress that the palm is going to face the target throughout the entire raising the ball to pass. Then we're going to take a short step in the direction of the throw. And when we throw the ball, we're going to frame the target between our feet. And we say the belt buckle's pointing to the target. Now, as we step the throw, I'm coming down the list. This is a weight transfer. You're going to set up, your feet are going to be as wide as your arm fits, knees slightly, slightly flexed, they're never locked or rigid. As you start to throw the ball, the weight transfers forward. 90% of the weight is on your rear foot before you throw the ball, and you're going to transfer 90% of it onto your front foot after the throw. And we say that the way that we know that we do this is that the chin should be over the toe of the lead foot on the delivery. This is very important because some quarterbacks overstride and it ruins their delivery. So if your chin, the chin is over the toe of, let's say, your left foot, if you're right-handed, as you throw the ball. And you can, uh, that's one of one of three things I check on quarterbacks every day. I'll, I'm going to get to these in a minute uh, in a drill. And we check three things to make sure that uh, he, he's doing these. All right, the actual throwing motion, number three. The elbow is going to lead the throw. The elbow above the elbow is above the shoulder after you've taken the ball back. And it's going to lead the ball as, a, as if you were throwing a fastball. And we say it should not be a conscious effort. It's something that has to be automatic. If you point the elbow out to the sideline when you got the ball back ready to throw, you're going to get a curveball. But if the elbow is pointing to where you can go with the ball, you're going to get a would really amount to a fastball, which is what you want. And we say high release. Move that up a little bit. Uh, yes, sir. So the number th move it up to where number three is, it's, is showing at the top page. 
All right, we want, um, all right, hope right there. All right, B, high release. The ball comes forward as high off the ground as comfortable. You want arm leverage. We say it's like throwing over a fence. You get more power. You avoid the defenses, defensive blocking the ball. So we say this, that the elbow should be shoulder height or higher when, as you let the ball come out. Uh, that to me, that's one of the first things you do when you teach a young kid. Even I had my son learning to throw just after he learned to walk. He, I said, pick the ball up and throw it. You do not let a kid drop his elbow when he throws the ball. The elbow should remain at shoulder height or higher as he releases the ball. And that's the next thing I said, there are three key points we look for. And I'll get to them also in a minute when we get to the drills. C, finger trip control. Push the fingertips of the ring, middle, and index finger through on the ball. The finger trips control accuracy. The thumb is going to leave the ball early. D, wrist rip. The palm faces the target as in a fastball. We talked about that, not a curveball. The no pointing of the ball, the long axis of the ball will, will align after the ball is released. You follow through, E, you extend your ham, uh, hand, arm, and shoulders towards the target. You pronate the wrist, that means you snap it down. You don't turn the wrist in or out, you snap the wrist straight down as if you were, you were throwing a volleyball with the palm facing the target. And as you come down, now the palm is going to be facing the ground. So you extend your hand arm and shoulders towards the target, pronate the wrist. This allow, should allow the hip, uh, you would allow the hip and the rear foot to come around. Getting the hip into the throwing motion is very important. After the ball is released, that right foot and right hip, right leg, right hip should come around so it's even or even past the left foot and the left hip of a right, uh, right-handed right passer. Getting the hip into the throwing motion is very important. And the whole thing totals F, a whole body concept. This is what you want. You want all your power to come from your feet, through your knees, hip, and your trunk. The whole body is going to pivot like a spring uncoiling. And the delivery must come off the front foot, not against the front foot. And that's why we say you're going to transfer 90% of your weight to your front foot as you throw the ball. Now, this is, uh, I went over that quickly, and you need to watch a kid on the field. You need to look at video kids throwing the ball to, to check this. But go to the next page. Page three. All right, Coach. He, uh, right. Dorrington right, said, right, good stuff right here. I love it. That's what he said, Coach. Good, good. I hope you can uh, get something out of this. All right, now, you're going to want to, to correct passing errors. And we video our quarterback throwing the ball. And I point these things out. While I'm coaching, but also he, it's good if he can see himself do these things. Because sometimes you tell a kid he's doing something wrong, but he's got to see it on a video himself. So if the error is that he's overthrowing his passes, that probably means that it's one of two things. He's either releasing the ball behind the top of the arc. Now, the arc means if we're going to throw the ball deep, we're going to let the ball come at it behind that head. But if your top of your head is a clock, and that's 12 o'clock, the top of your head. If you let the ball come out behind your head at 10 o'clock, we do that on deep passes. If you let the ball come out at 12 o'clock, it's coming out of your hands at 12, it's directly over your head, and that's all, let's say, a ball thrown 12 yards deep. Or if you let the ball come out at 2 o'clock out in front of your head, that's a shorter pass, let the ball come out at 2 o'clock on passes of six yards deep, let's say. I should have a picture of that up here. I don't. I've got one somewhere. But So overthrows usually come from releasing the ball behind the top of your throwing arc or overstriding. Because if you overstride, you haven't gotten your weight up on your front foot. Your leg's too far apart. Your hips drop and your arm drops, and that causes an overthrow as well. Now, if the quarterback's underthrowing, He's generally releasing too far in top of that arc at either 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, or 2 o'clock. 10 o'clock on deep passes, 18 yards or more. 12 o'clock on intermediate passes, say 12 o'clock, 12 yards deep. And 2 o'clock on shorter passes at 6 yards deep. Or he might be understriding. He's not getting his weight directly, his chin over the toe of his left foot when he releases the ball. 
it could be, let's say, beyond that. Uh, his, his body weight uh, is not over to directly over his chin is not over directly over top of his front foot, and that would be another stride. Now, if the tail of the ball wobbles, means he's probably got a jerky motion in his throat. Or it could mean the palm is not rotated down on the, on the release of the ball towards the ground. Or the elbow might be too wide. We talked about that. We want to keep the elbow pointing to the target as you release the ball. Or it might be that the grip is too far forward or back on the ball. And grip is an individual thing. And I won't get too much into that right now. I can have a video talking about gripping the football. If the ball floats, it means the point might be too high on the ball. <laughs> now, you want the nose up slightly on a pass. I have something really interesting here that also is in, in, in some other material, but one of the great four passing coaches I talked about, Chuck Purvis, he advocated back in the, started back in the 1950s at the University of Illinois. They won the Rose Bowl that one year there with him. He advocated that the nose of the ball has got to be up slightly because it makes the ball easier to catch and the pass more accurate. He even had a drill where he would take his quarterbacks and stand them 10 or 12 yards from a, a hard surface, like a brick wall. We used to do this with the wall of that field house uh, with quarterbacks back in the 1960s. And the quarterback's throwing the ball properly from, say, 10 or 12 yards away. He's throwing the ball into uh, a, a target on a brick wall, maybe about six feet high. If the ball bounces back to the left, straight back to the left, that means he's released the ball properly. This sounds weird, but it really happens every time. And if the ball bounces back to the right, it means that he doesn't have a good release on the ball. And I have a whole lecture just on, on the, that. That's called a nose-up drill. But you don't want the point of the ball too high. That could cause the ball to float, particularly thrown into the wind. But, but you want it slightly uh, up a little bit in your, uh, in your uh, hand. Or you could, if the ball floats, you might have a too loose a grip. You don't want to squeeze a football. You want a little daylight to show between your palm and the ball, but you don't want to have, you don't want to uh, have a loose grip nor too tight a grip. If the point of the ball is too high in flight, it means the point's up too high in the grip. If the point of the ball is too low, it means the point's down in the grip. We tell our quarterback he grips the ball the note we, to have the nose of the football just up slightly and work on throwing it against the wall. When it bounces back to the left, it means that he's throwing it properly. If it bounces back to the right, he's not throwing it properly. That's something that coaching quarterbacks has been lost over the years. But I have a whole video just on that point, and I know that uh, almost every great quarterback coach I've talked to, you know, Dan Henning, Bill Crutchfield, Chuck Purvis, Bill Walsh, they all stress that the ball should be up slightly in the grip. And you threw the, when you throw the ball, you want the nose to be up slightly in flight, but not real high, not too high. That's something that's got to be worked out. Take it up a little higher. Yes, sir. So if you, if you find that you have an inability to throw with velocity, any of these things could be the cause. So this sheet right here is, is self-correction for some quarterbacks. They can take this home in the summer, maybe, or... or of course, we work our quarterbacks in the summer, but they can take these things with them and check themselves out sometimes when they throw with their father or their friends. But the inability to throw with any velocity, the weight's not transferred to the front foot. Remember, 90% of the weight's got to come onto the front foot with the chin over the toe on release. You might have poor hip and shoulder rotation. You're not bringing the right side of your body into the throw. The right hip. It's like a uh, right hip of a golfer, Dan Henning would say, it gets into the uh, swing and golf's got to get into the throw in football. You may not be pulling down on the ball. So as you snap your wrist to release the ball, you, you, you're pronating your wrist and bringing your hand down, palm towards the ground, and slightly out, actually. Uh, there may be, may be no hand acceleration. That's pretty much the same as not pulling the ball down, no hand acceleration. That all comes from the snap of the wrist. No follow through. We want to come down with the ball. Remember that time I was telling you on a knee drill that the quarterbacks release the ball. They don't want the ball go and stop. They come all the way down with that right hand until it touches the ground. Uh, you have to have follow through to get your whole body into the throat. We talked about that you and I one time watching a knee drill. Yes, sir. The quarterback was letting the ball go out in front of his face, and, and he would stop there and start following down with his hand all the way where he could touch the ground if he was doing the knee drill. 
or you might be throwing across the body. We don't want the throwing hand to come any further to the left than the, than the middle of the body between his legs or maybe maybe to his left hip a little bit, but not out wide to the left. So we don't believe in throwing across the body. All of them can cause inability to throw a velocity. Now, inaccuracy can result from not taking your initial step at the target or throwing across the body or not pointing your fingertips at the target as you release the ball. Or it could be because you just have a poor concept of receiver's routes. So any of those things can uh, be a problem. Now, this page is important. You know, we want the quarterback to really major in, in – uh, I've lost your picture for some reason. You, what do you mean? You too? I can't see you. I can't see the uh, screen. It's, it's just a circle going around. Oh, would you just refresh your browser, Coach. All right, uh, Dorrington has a uh, wait, I wanted to go to page, yeah, page three now. Okay, Dorrington has a question. He said, does it change when a quarterback has a natural three-quarter release? Well, anywhere from directly over the head to three-quarter sidearm is acceptable. But when you get more than three-quarter sidearm, it's not. That's really not acceptable. I mean, quarter what sidearm. quarterback have you seen that's less than three-quarter sidearm? Bernie Kosar? Well, he was more sidearm than three quarters. Gosh, I don't know. You would have to. I mean, I don't know anybody that throws the ball sidearm. Well, three three quarters is all right. Three quarters is all right. That's acceptable. You directly on your head or out a little bit to the right. We we like to tell the quarterback that when he goes to throw the football, I like to see his hand over his elbow as he lets the ball go. And you can you can extend your arm straight up the air. Your hands over your elbow, or you can move your. Uh, hand out to where you have a three quarters uh, set up, and the hand will still be over top of the elbow. It'll be like the, the elbow is forming a the hand and the elbow form an L. The hand over top, the top of the L, over top of the elbow, which starts at the bottom of the L. If you if you get what I'm saying, I can show this to somebody easier. But three quarter releases is, is a natural three quarter release is not bad at all. That's probably how I would throw a ball. So directly over here, a three quarters release, but if more than three quarters release. Now you've got the hand outside of the elbow pointing out. And, uh, I don't like that. I think that's not good. I want you to see my homes kid. And he's throwing it backwards, side arm, over, on the hand, lower hand behind his back. But that's that's different. Uh, he's a different breed of cat anyway. But, all right, go to the, the triangle weight transfer drill. Take that up a little bit just so you can see where it is. You know, you see more of the picture. You've got Dorrington's uh, comments. Is, Okay, I'll take the comment off. He said Josh Allen is close to three quarters for the pros. Well, I'm sure three quarters is fine. But probably you have as more that are actually a natural three quarters than, than directly overhead. Three quarters sidearm is side uh, a three quarters of a sidearm release is fine, but not more than that. If you went half or less, I would say you were you were not. Uh, getting it done. It's got to be an L. If, if, if your hand, if you, you, you extend your elbow straight out, now, Dorrington can do this thing, extend your elbow straight out, and then put your hand directly over top of your elbow. That's three quarters, and that's fine. That's perfect. It's no trouble at all. But if you brought it in more towards your head, raise your elbow up a little bit, that's fine. But when you get that hand down, if you're three quarters and you move it out to your right, if you're right-handed, that's more than three quarters. That's that's not good at all. All right, the triangle weight transfer drill. This is probably the very first drill we would do. Uh, I even favor this over the knee drill because it, it, it incorporates some things that uh, a knee drill is a good warm-up drill. Or good in the off-season to strengthen your arm, but this more or less incorporates the triangle weight transfer drill would incorporate the three main points we want to throw the ball. And we always began with this every day. And it says that a triangle will exist between uh, the top of your head and your two shoulders. And that's the target we want to put the ball in. I was throwing that a guy on the left thing, I was throwing for it right in that, tar in that triangle. So you, you take two quarterbacks and put them across from each other 10 yards apart. And you see there's a line between the two quarterbacks over on the right. That line's going to be important. All right. 
we tell them that, and I'll go to the other where it says, we tell them that three things are important and are taught on this drill. Remember I said that in the first, uh, the, other, the last two pages, we talked about all these points and techniques. But this is where I actually, in this drill, I actually check to see that they're doing three of these things that are the three most important things. And if you, if you taught these three things, uh, you would probably have a pretty good quarterback if he could do these three things right. In spite of the fact that there's a long checklist, if you go back to page two and page three, you're on page four now, but if you went back to page two and page three, that's kind of a long checklist. But if he's doing what I have here on page four, you probably have a pretty good quarterback holding right there. Are right, you the three things that we want? First of all, he's got to throw down the line. And you see in, there was a line between those two quarterbacks on the top right, but just leave it where it is. And throwing the ball is a definite line that exists between the quarterback and the receiver. In order to throw the ball properly, your left foot has to be on the left side of the line and your right foot has to be on the right side of the line. All of your force and momentum is straight down that line to the receiver. So that's what we call throwing the ball down the line. If you let that left foot cross that line to the right of that line, that locks your hips and you can't rotate your body properly, you throw it across your body. And these are the three things that every day I comment on these. My quarterbacks hear this and, and I get them to the point where they do these three things, if nothing else. Second, they elbow should uh, be above the shoulder. You keep your throwing elbow above your shoulder because the proper wrist action is an overhand action. As if when you threw the ball, you could actually reach out and slap the receiver on the back. If the elbow is above the, is, is below the shoulder, you're going to get a curveball action, and that's what you don't want. And that comes from throwing too far side on, because now you're dropping the elbow. All right, third, don't overstride. You're set with your feet six inches apart. Or as wide as shoulder, shoulder width apart, but we, I started them off six inches apart, the feet. You take a short stride without overstriding if your feet are only six inches apart. Now you can get your way up over that front foot. And we talked about having the chin over the toes of the lead foot. That's a left foot for right-handed passer. Now the elbow will go up above the shoulder and you can deliver the ball overhand. If you overstride, your hips are going to drop, your elbow will be below your shoulder, and you'll have a curveball and a loss of power. All right, take that to the next page. Hey, Coach, you know Mike Pope? The coach of the Giants. Yeah, he's passed. He's deceased. Um, coach. Oh, you tell me, Mike. You tell me, Mike Pope. A uh, Mike Pope that played for me at Deep Creek, or a Mike Pope that used to coach college ball in a small college in North Carolina. Uh, Mike Pope, the coach of the New York Giants. He put coach the tight ends. He lives in uh, Na Naples, sure. Naples, Florida. I'm, oh, I'm not sure if I know him or not. Yeah, Co Coach Coach McNally has suggested him and gave me his number. He said he was very sharp. Oh, good. Okay, okay good. All right. All right you good with where it is five. now, Coach? Page five. Whoa, right there. Now, we talked about wanting a high release. This is – Dan Henning actually wrote this sheet. That's his drawing and his typing right there on the other side. I pretty much typed the others up. This is one that Dan gave me. I worked at quarterback school or camps with Dan for five, five or six summers. And it, it, they were held in Roanoke, Virginia. And I can remember at some point that Dan Marino, the great Dolphins quarterback, and Joe Theismann, the great Redskins quarterback, they both said that Dan Henning was the best quarterback coach you ever played for. That tells you, that's quite a bit right there. And I, and I think that Dan Henning is perhaps the best quarterback coach I've ever been around of the four that I mentioned. All right, Dan says, to develop a high release, you work on throwing the ball over the crossbar of a goal post. And, of course, the crossbar is 10 feet high, right? All right, so you've got, as you see, a receiver on one side uh, of the goal post and a quarterback 10 to 12. Uh, the receiver's 10 to 12 yards on his side of the goal post. The quarterback set at six, six to seven yards on his side of the goal post. Now, the key point here, when you throw the ball over the goalpost, you don't lob it over. You get that arm up high like a tennis serve, and you try to line drive it over. And that, that will, you have to have a high uh, elbow up and a high release to line drive that ball over top of the goalpost. It's like a tennis serve. And you, you come up high with the head of the racket and pull down. Uh, the organization says that quarterbacks are working together. 
and one's seven yards behind the goal post, the other's 12 yards on the other side of the post. Quarterback practice is getting a high release and throws the ball over the post. Now, I take that all up so that uh, – Hey, coach, it, it is yeah. it is the same Mike Pope. He coached at Lenore High School, Olympic High School, Wolfson High School. Then he went to Lake Wales. Then he went to Florida State in 1970 as a grad assistant. And then from 1971 okay. to 74, he was at Florida State, coach. He coached he with Parcells. Well, Ask him, does he know Dan Henning? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I knew I had a Mike Pope that played for me at Deep Creek High School. He yeah. Tackle. There was a Mike Pope that was in a wheelchair. He was crippled. And then used to come up and put on camps here in Richmond, line, line play. So this is a third Mike Pope. Yeah. But you yeah, said he coached I, high school in North Carolina, Coach. That was him. Yeah, but this is not the Mike Pope that was crippled and was in a wheelchair and passed away about 10 years ago. So there's a third Mike Pope. Okay, gotcha. There's three of them. Gotcha, Coach. The other one used to have a website. But anyway, ask this Mike Pope how well he knew Dan Henning. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Dan Coach. Henning. Coach, as soon as I, as soon as we get done here, I'm calling him. I thought you had him on the line. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Go back, go back to page five. I haven't finished page five. All right, sorry, Coach. You on page six now? All right, you want it right there? Page five of, of nine. Look at the top left hand the, side. Develop high Let's release. Goal post drill? Yeah. Okay. Go back to page five of nine. I got it on I'm page looking, five. I, I'm looking at the numbers at the top left hand side of the screen. You're on six of nine. Now I want you on five of nine. That's a previous page. So it's not the high release. It's the triangle. Triangle. No, the goal post, no, the goal post drill. Now take it up to where the diagram is out of there, but the writing is still on there. Right there? Uh, you're behind me. Take it up to where I can read the writing at the bottom of that page. Goal post drill down to develops quarterback's ability to throw 19 yards. Take, take it take it up so I can see the writing at the bottom half of the page. I'm looking at the picture there. No, the other way, the other way, Troy. You're going the wrong way. Stay on page five. All right, there. Move it up so I can see the bottom half of that page. That is the bottom half, Coach. It develops quarterback's ability to throw 19 yards is the last thing. Yeah, I only see – all right, now hold it right there. There you've got it. You're behind me, as you know. Uh, yeah. All right. Now, it says I, I left off. We were talking about the quarterback practicing the high release and throwing the ball to the post. The crossbar was – well, they left me again. I can't see it. Hold it. Hold it. The crossbar simulates the height of the hands of the pass rushers. Now, let me make a point. Dan used to say that if you could do this, you could throw the ball over the pass rushers, but you don't want to throw the ball over a rush. You want to throw it between rushes. But technically speaking, if you could do this drill properly, you would be able to throw the ball over the hands of most rushers. All they can jump up and touch the basket uh, to 10 feet high. All right. Um, if the receiver's 12 yards down field, or 12 yards away, I should say, it would be the same as if it were a medium area pass, such as a curl. And this, this you can extend it to add uh, deeper passes or the quarterback taking a drop in this drill as well. And it develops a quarterback's ability to throw 19 yards or so with definition as if he were in a ball game, throwing over a 10-foot rush. He's 7 yards deep, he's throwing it 12 yards down the field. So he's... This drill teaches you to get that elbow up and throw a 90-yard uh, pass on a line and with a high, high release, which is very desirable. Dan would do – this was Dan's favorite drill. I would the, the, do this drill on the one we looked at before this, the triangle weight transfer drill. I would do the triangle weight transfer drill and the goal post drill almost every day that I had my quarterbacks uh, drilling. All right, go to the next page. That'd be page six. Okay. These are there's a couple other drills on here, but those six are the main ones. I mean, I'm sorry, those two are the main ones. All right, I need you to go to the next page. The hash mark drill. No, I can't see it. Yeah, that should be it. I don't see it yet. 
All right, let me check. You don't see hash mark drill? No, I see organization on the goalpost drill seal. All right, whoa, there you go. All right. I say best quarterback drill we have. This is probably the most realistic in, in terms of taking a drop and throwing the ball and throwing it the same distances as if we were uh, doing this in a game. This is uh, – I, I start off with a triangle weight transfer drill, and then I go to the goal post drill, then we progress to this drill. So you've got uh, quarterbacks on uh, both sides that you're one yard off the line of scrimmage, uh, which to allow for a center. And the other quarterback is going to be six yards deep on the opposite hash, which is a hash mark distance away. And we normally throw the ball a hash mark distance. If we're throwing, we have that wide receiver split close to 17 yards on a curl, and here the quarterback's throwing the ball 17 yards. So, uh, take that up a little higher. Yes, sir. So you would take, just so the, the, we see where it says best QB drill, take that up to the top of the Yes, page. sir. Got it. All right. So, First of all, he'll take a three-step drop and throw the hitch to the other quarterback. Then the other quarterback would take, would take a three-step drop and throw the hitch back to him. Then we increase the depth to, to 12 yards deep to throw the uh, five-step passes. So he's taking a three-step pass, we throw the hitch uh, to the other quarterback who's six yards deep. But then when we want to increase the depth of the quarterback to 12 yards deep on each pass so they can work on that five-step depth of passes. Quarterback then will be uh, the other quarterback 12 yards deep on his hash. We throw an equal amount to both the right and the left. I've actually had quarterbacks that didn't throw as well to the left where I would throw more in the drills to the left than the right. Uh, Aikens was a good example of that. I probably overdid him throwing to the left. He became as accurate to throwing to the left as he did to the right. Maybe more so. I might have overdone that. Um, you don't need receivers. You keep two or three footballs in front of the quarterbacks so he won't have to try to catch a bad throw. The managers will go after the balls. And we walk around. I walk around and watch their mechanics. The same three coaching points I stressed in the triangle weight transfer drill. All right. But this is a, the third drill I would go to. All right. That, what you have at the bottom is the same thing I already went over. Go to the next page. Okay. Quarterback trash can drill. Yeah. Can you pause for about 30 seconds? Yes, sir. It, yeah, I've got to hit the late minutes. Pause for about 30 seconds. Put me on yes, pause. Yes, sir. I'll be, right, I'll be right back. Yeah, you're on pause, coach. Yes, sir. I, I'll be right with you. Just keep me on pause. Just another second, two minutes. Are we still on pause? Yes, sir. Right, hold on. It won't be long. Man. Do they realize we're on pause on the site? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Tell them I'll be right back. Uh, Coach Mountjoy will be right back, y'all. Normally I can go longer than this without having to pee, but this is going to be long. I'll load it up on coffee. That's okay, Coach. <sighs> okay, hang on. I'm headed back to the computer. Dorian said that he just sent you an email, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, Coach Coach will get it, Dorian. 
I mean, uh, Dorrington, he'll get it, he'll get right back to you. Yeah, I got you, Coach. Okay. It's on the trash can drill. I'm live now. Yes. Tell me when to start talking. You re start talking, Coach. Okay, trash can drill. The objective is to be able to float a ball into a trash can from a distance in an awesome way to work on the perfect drop, on the perfect drop of a dime touchdown pass. And we had five footballs, one trash can, you know, we, we have plastic trash cans we use, so it's a full-size plastic can. We put a 20-pound weight in the plastic can, so when the ball hits it, it won't turn over. And a target to retrieve the balls. We're going to go for five or ten reps on this. Take that up a little higher, or we can set up and down. All right. on this would vary, but the setup, we want to set the trash can up where you want it. If it were on a football field, we would normally place the can in the back corner of the end zone, and we would place the weight in the bottom of the trash can so that it would not turn over if the ball hits the rim. Take it up a little bit. I can't see the bottom of the page. Look where it says instructions. We set up 30 yards from the trash can. On, we on the 20, just just on the hash, and uh, we have five footballs within reach. We take a three-step drop if we're on the center, or just catch the ball and throw if you're in a gun. Just pivot and throw. Focus on your target. Lock the ball, try to hit, get it in the trash can. And, whoa, you left me now. I can't see what I was reading. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Okay. In order to settle into a rhythm, grab another football set up for the next rep as quickly as possible. Tips. Be sure your arm is warmed up before you attempt this drill. We probably will warm up with the uh, uh, triangle weight transfer drill. Get a nice high arc on the ball. That's crucial having it landing in the trash can. This drill is fun, but it's also challenging. Don't be discouraged if it takes several throws before you make it into the trash can. You remember when you and I and Jim Woodson and Bruce Carroll had a quarterback camp in Alatan? Yes. It took, I don't know how many throws before any of the quarterbacks got the ball in the trash can, but when they got this knack, it more or less set in, I guess is a good word to use, a good term to use, because they started hitting it more frequently. It took three, four, five throws before they were getting the ball to the trash can properly. And then after that, they got the feel of it and it worked fine. Take it up so the whole diagram shows. Yes, sir. I don't see much of the diagram to set up. We've gone through all the coaching points, but I don't see the diagram yet. Yeah, it's coming. All right. So you're a few seconds behind me, I guess. But I still don't see the diagram. Can you refresh your browser? I don't know. I, I, I messed up. There it is. Oh, right there. That's good. All right, so he's set on the hash mark uh, on the 20. Balls in the uh, corners, it's just like you were throwing a fade into the end zone, which which we like to do. That would look like that. But it could be from deeper or closer in, but you, you would work on that. All right, go to the next page. We yes, sir. Along now. There you go. I don't know whether Dorrington is still listening or not. I hope he's getting something out of this, but... Uh, I think there's a total of five or six drills on here, and we would do probably the triangle weight transfer drill and the goalpost drill every day. 
we do the hash mark drill and this uh, trash can drill. Not if not every day, probably every other day, maybe. But we we would. Um, these are the basic drills. Of course, there are more drills. You can come up with a million drills. You don't need a million. All right, you remember this one, hitting the moving receiver drill. And the purpose of this is to, hit a, to teach a quarterback the importance of the spin factors on the football when throwing to a receiver breaking to his left or to his right. Because as you know, a right-handed pass, the balls will drift to the right in flight. And uh, so if you're hitting a receiver, take it up a little bit so I can see example down there. All right. This is an example is a right-handed passer. And if, if you were left-handed, everything would be opposite. So if a right-handed passer is throwing an end-breaking route coming from his right to his left, the ball is going to spin in a clockwise motion uh, to the right and will drift slightly into the receiver. Therefore, since the ball is going to drift into him, you've got to overlead him so that he's not actually in your frame when you throw the ball. He's coming into the frame when you throw the ball. I take that up to where I can see the bottom half of the page. Down the line, sprint drill. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right there. Um, so, if the right handed passer is throwing an in breaking route coming from his left to his right, the ball spins in a clockwise motion that will drift away from the receiver. So, you do not have to overlead. Actually, there, you just throw the ball at it because it's drifting in the direction he's running. But if he's coming. To the quarterback's left, you've got to overlead it because he's running into the spin of the ball. If you throw to the uh, quarterback's the receivers coming from the quarterback's left, you don't overlead. Whoa, 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 whoa! Come back. You left my page. Oh, I, I'm not touching nothing, coach. So I must be way well, behind. It just flew up. It, it did left. I was reading something and it took off on its own. So if the receiver's coming right to left, you have to overlead him because the ball is spinning into where he's coming anyway, so he'll run into the, the spin of the ball. But if you're throwing a receiver coming from your left, you don't overlead him because the ball is spinning in the same direction he's running. In that case, you more or less would just throw it at him. And we want to do that drill until the receivers are catching the ball in stride. They're not having to slow up to, to catch a ball that's coming behind them or speed up to catch a ball that's too far out in front. So you do that drill until the receivers are catching the ball in stride. I think there's one more drill I want to go over, then I have some important points to make in summary. Down the line? To the next drill. Down the line? Yeah, down the line. Now, everything I've talked about so far has been drop back passing, and we drop back maybe 80% of the time, but we still have the other 20% where the quarterback's throwing on the run. And the down the line drill is going to teach a quarterback to throw on the run, which is a requires some special points, coaching points. All right, whoa. All right, that's good. Down the line, sprint out drill. We stress the same three main coaching points that we did in the triangle weight transfer drill. That is, if you keep your but if you kept your shoulders and belt buckle pointing towards the sideline. I helped uh, a coach in the area and a really fine sophomore quarterback this year, and this was a big mistake. He would run to sprint to his right, and his shoulders and belt buckle would be facing the sideline. He couldn't complete the pass because now he's throwing to, across his body. So in order to throw properly, you're running an arc. You're running straight across, but then you have to come make an arc, which is drawing. You can see it in the drawing there. Square your shoulders up point your belt buckle to the receiver and throw the ball. Back in 1971 at Huguenot Academy, we were private school state champions in the state of Virginia. Beat some of the better public schools. I had a quarterback named Jay Plummer, who was coach and athlete, named him as a high school All-American quarterback. And Bear Bryant was on a selection committee of the magazine. And we worked this drill with Jay, and he got to be so good on sprint out passing because if he... If he sprinted out and decided to run rather than pass, it might be a touchdown. I had a kid like that at Carolina as well who could fly. That was a good runner. So you have to work on the down the line drill. Uh, if you do any sprint out passing, you might do naked boots. You might do waggles. You might do uh, 
uh, what, do you, what do we call all these different dash passes? We do a dash pass where we'll drop that pin spread out. And this drill is essential if you do any of those type things. All right, I'd like to conclude on the next page, which yes, is sir. Very, very important. Coach, I don't have I don't have nothing on stress the same three white. No, you had a separate. It was a separate attachment. Okay, I gotta pull. I gotta pull it up. All right, it was a one page separate attachment. Yes, sir. I'll get it. And this is as you're looking for. I'm talking about what the quarterbacks should be doing right now. Let's say it's February. 22nd or whatever day it is. I can't remember. Yeah, 21st. And that's all right. 21st. I found and, uh, it. I found it, Coach. All right. Uh, let me see it on the screen. That. Um, and this one, if I had my uh, quarterbacks today, this is what the schedule they would be following. Because never forget what Bill Walsh said. And, you know, gosh, he's, there's never been a better one. Passing game coach and Bill Walsh. And coach McNally Bill said, Walsh, you know, Coach McNally said he's the best that he's ever been around. Yeah, well, I'm going to make a quote about Bill Walsh. Yeah. Out of his book directly. Drill work provides a tangible opportunity for invaluable repetitive practice. Such practice should be conducted on a year round basis, particularly in the out of season. We're in the out of season now. It's not an off season because we're not off. It's an out of season. People yeah. talk about off season. You're not off if you're doing these things. So it's out of season and not off season. Yeah. I think Jim would agree with that. So you do these things in the out of season, both in the winter and the spring and the summer. All right, there it is. Is Jim listening now? Jim Woodson or? No, Jim Kim back out. He was just talking about him. Oh, no, sir. I don't believe he's listening. No. But oh, I'm just, okay. Yeah, I was just telling anyway, you that's what he this, said. All right, this is what the quarterbacks, our quarterbacks would be doing now if I were a high, a high school. Yeah, Do Dorrington. Dorrington said he is still there, Coach. Oh, good. That's good. I tell him to hang around. All right. First thing that we are doing now is we're going to be throwing the ball four days a week. And the reason is four and not five. We don't throw for more than two days in a row. So we throw Monday and Tuesday, take Wednesday out of away from throwing, we'll put it somewhere else, and we'll throw Thursday and Friday. I might add there that if anybody copies that, Throw before you lift weights so that you won't be fatigued and practice bad habits. All right, number one, work on your drops. Just drops at least 10. Three-step drop and five-step drop on the center or catch and throw, three-step drop, and a gun. So you're working on your drops 10 minutes every day. And I know that the great Brigham Young quarterback coach, Doug Scoble, used to say that he filmed the drops every day and that he thought footwork, he worked as much on footwork as he did on throwing the ball. But anyway, two, work on carrying the ball chest high between the letters of the chin. That's where you're carrying the ball as you're taking your drops. You keep the ball, you don't drop the ball lower than the letters when you're in the drop. Three, then you throw about 10 three step drops to each side. Now, for us, that would be a hitch and a slant. So you're throwing you throw about five hitches and five slants to the right. Then five hitches and five slants to the left. Don't get lazy and sloppy. Throw under game conditions. Be quick at all times. Of course, we're timing the quarterback. We're timing his setup and the three step drop, which is eight tenths of a second, and we time it his release, which is 1.3 to 1.8. Four. Then we're going to the, the five step drops. And we'll, uh, if you're on the center or three steps, if you're in the gun. We will take 30 minutes. We will throw curls, ends, which is a dig, outs, which is a sideline, and posts. We're going to fill those four outs in about 30 minutes. And we're going to work on the timing once again. We're going to time the quarterbacks. Now we're going to time him. He's going to take 1.3 to set up on those four passes, and he's going to have the ball out anywhere from 1.8 to 2.3. 1.8 on a, uh, I would say, on the outs and the post, and uh, – 2.3 maybe on the curls and the ends because you've got to work on him uh, maneuvering. And with that, once again, we're working on timing. Here's a very important point. Don't wait for the receiver to get open. Throw the ball before he's totally open. Lead him to the open area. And that is critical. Number five. Now we finish up throwing about 10 up routes. That's the, you know, the deep go route. 10 up routes to each side. 
side, five to the right, five to the left. That uh, trash can drill is good for that. But we say throw quick. Don't wait for him to get deeper than 25 or 30 yards. You're not trying to throw the ball 40, 50 yards. You're not trying to do that in the game, and most kids can't do it anyway. So you're going to throw quick. You're going to throw the deep route, no deeper than 25 to 35 yards with proper trajectory. You can release the ball, you know, behind the top of the arc. Once again, if we're throwing uh, number three, the, the quick passes, we release the ball at 2 o'clock in front of the arc. If we throw the intermediate routes at number four, that's releasing the ball at 12 o'clock on the arc directly above head. And if we're throwing the ball in the up routes, we're going to throw it, release the ball behind the top of the arc, which is at 10 o'clock behind the head. So we're stressing the proper release points. After all that, so we're going to throw Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to lift Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you might say, well, you've got a uh, Wednesday off in the throwing. There's no throwing on Wednesdays. But we're lifting Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we take that Wednesday, the day that we take the break in the throwing, and we have quarterback school. We go in a classroom on Wednesdays from 45 to 60 minutes on the non-throwing day. So overall, it's going to look like this. We're going to throw Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to lift Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Wednesdays, in place of the throwing, at that same time frame, we'll go in the classroom for the quarterback school and teach the quarterback, you know, to understand out pass offense, to understand defenses, and uh, how to be a leader, things like that. So this is this page is what we would be doing right now with quarterbacks in the out of season. And uh, I think that, obviously, if you don't do this now, you don't expect it to be as good in August when the practice starts. We'll do these, this type of thing uh, in the winter and the, sp uh, in the spring, and then come back in the summer and play a, uh, do some of this and play a ton of seven on seven, too. All right, that, that about does it. Let me make one more statement, though. When you throw the ball, let's say on this schedule right here, our quarterbacks, we would ice the elbow of their throwing arm down after they threw. That would prevent any any soreness if there was any. And um, we'd ice the throwing arm down for maybe 15 minutes throwing uh, on these days. And we'd have him ride a stationary bike at the same time he was icing his elbow down for 15 minutes. That way he's working on his um, – He's icing the arm down and relieving any problems that might occur in the elbow, which we really didn't have any, but we did that anyway to be sure. And he's working his legs with the uh, stationary bike. This page is probably as important as any of the others. It's extremely important to schedule. And I don't know whether you're doing these things right now, Troy, but. Yeah, we're not allowed to do anything right now, Coach. we got two weeks we got to take off. Who told you that? That's the VHSO rule, dead period, because it's don't the start. Tell her I said to go to hell, and I'm a life member of the VHSO. Yeah. Dr. Han. Dr. Han's the president. We'll tell him. Bill, you know Billy Han? Billy Han used yeah, to. I, we'll tell him, tell him I said that. <laughs> you know, I don't think anybody ought to tell you that you can't help a kid. If a young man wants you to help him, his parents want you to help him, why can't you help him? That's cheating the kid. I agree, Coach. That's criminal. That's criminal. Somebody ought to take his butt to court. Well, they, say, he, they say he was a coach, Coach. You know him? I think he was coach at Carolina at one time, didn't he? Billy Hahn? I'm not sure, Coach. Well, I think so. I, I don't know. But anyway. But if that's wrong, yeah. tell him that Vince Lombardi and Sid Gilman up there in the pearly gates tell him to go to hell also. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> Yeah, you're the That's best. Wrong. You tell, you're telling a young man that you can, that if he wants you to help him, his parents want you to help him, and he's striving for, to improve himself, and you can't go help him. I know, coach. I just have him come and throw in my backyard. I think what he means is you can't use school facilities. That's wrong. Yes. Too. Yeah, they said that it's. Well, I have him come and throw in your backyard then. Yeah. That's... But, you, but let me let me mention this. You can never spend. This is another Bill Walsh quote. You can never spend too much time on or with your quarterback and you don't let some guy playing guard tell you you can't do it yeah or some guy that's a, a paid trainer you, you would you ever let anybody else coach your quarterback that ain't you or oh, your no 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 the, the quarterback here's only one voice that's mine you can't have 
two people coaching a quarterback, three people coaching a quarterback. I'm not saying you can't have a quarterback guru come in and look at your kid and make suggestions and say he needs to do this, that, and the other. I'm talking about if you're in practice and you're on the practice field and you tell your quarterbacks one thing, and then you go so you go off and another coach runs over and tells him something else, you really have a screwed up quarterback. Quarterback can only listen to one quarterback coach. Uh, that's why you know, we hire we, we would have a quarterback coach, not necessarily as an offensive coordinator either. A great quarterback coach is like a golf uh, personalized golf. And that's so, true, coach. And he doesn't have we don't we don't we don't hire a quarterback coach. I, I coach my own quarterbacks, but if I were going to micromanage or if I were going to uh, try to be everywhere at once, so to speak, I would have a personalized trainer with him at all times, and he would be the only guy that the quarterback could listen to. Yeah, you can't listen to too many voices. I agree, anyway, coach. That's a, that's about all I have to say. And once again, I guess Dorrington may have been the only guy listening to this. But no, coach, uh, coach, we've had ten people listening to it the whole time. Oh, well, that's good. We'll tell all of them that my email address is. You can flash that back up again on page one. Bill Mountjoy. Yeah, it's it's uh, it was on the first page. Bill Mountjoy. I'm putting it up there. Com. Anybody that wants to see any of these notes, they want a copy of all these pages that we put up here, I can send those to them. Or I have more stuff written on that pass offense. I have video videos that I would love to show people on training quarterback. Great videos by some great coaches on how to coach quarterbacks. I don't send the videos out, and I can't get them online. I don't know how to do that. But but anybody wants to come by here and look at these videos with me, is welcome to come by and have a cup of coffee and look at the videos. Uh, but if they want any of this printed material, they can email me, uh, call me, and I'll send it out right away. Yeah, Coach. But, uh, well, thank you, Coach. Uh, and go you'll back be to the email address. Right? Let's see. Today's Wait, Tuesday. Yeah, when you want to right there. Today's Tuesday. Um, do you want to come back on on, on Saturday? Because my son Jackson, he was asking me about coming over to see you because I told him that you had some books, and maybe we'll come over Saturday and do one live, Coach. Like a video. Yeah, well, I might have to shave and take a bath in order to do that. I look like a werewolf right now. I scare everybody to death. Yeah. But we'll, we'll do another one. We'll, yeah. we'll do another one. We'll do another one, like, maybe on Saturday. What do you want to talk about next? Well, you know, the one thing I haven't copied in enough detail, if anybody, uh, even if they don't use the exact same pass offense I do, there are some very important points on setting your pass protection. And... I, I, I'm not going to go off on another tangent now, but there's five basic fronts in football. You've got an even, an odd, an over, an under, and a bear. And all defenses in football fit into those five basic categories. You can have 100 defenses, they all fit in five categories. And that pass protection has to hold up on all five of those categories. And we have, I have some very important information. Jim McNally would appreciate this. Very important information on how to set your protection to handle all five of those categories of defense. I actually got it from uh, some Bengals, uh, Boomer Sison and uh, Dana Bible, uh, earlier than that, Lindy Infante and Jim McNally, yeah. on how to adjust your basic coverage, uh, your basic pass protection, so it will hold up on even, over, odd, under, bear, five five categories of defenses. And if, if you don't have your, co- your protection able uh, is not able to hold up against those five fronts you will lose receivers that won't be able to check out and you'll end up instead of having five guys on a pattern you might have only three yeah and jim knows what i'm talking about there i have some great information on that as well well and, coach uh, we'll go over that next all right we'll do that we'll do it on saturday okay yeah all right. Right. okay thank you coach I, I know, Coach, but my son yeah, wants to come because – I can't get through to you on the phone anymore. Your, your phone won't let me leave a message. Yeah, I know, Coach, but you, I, I'm I'm doing good since I got this podcast started, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. doing – Coach, we're doing good, Coach. I mean, we got Norm Chow. We got uh, Jim McNally. I mean, you yeah, said you want Callahan. I messaged McNally about getting Callahan. Well, you got to get Dan Henning now. And don't forget when you get Norm, get him to talk about nothing else other than having the quarterback come up to the line and say, I think that's cover three. I think that's cover two. I think that's cover zero. That's what we're going to do. Coach, I might have you on with me. 
I'm going to have you on the phone with me with Coach with Coach Norm Chow. I want him to do the talking. I don't want to do it. I, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, he's he might not have the greatest patience if I if I start chiming in. You just need to get it from him. Okay. And maybe I can come on in, come on after he talks or something. Okay, Coach. We'll do it. Okay. He's, he's in Switzerland and he's coaching that European Pro Football League. Man, he might not have a lot of time. Yeah. Okay, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.